This is my first board game. This is my favorite board game now. I got you, that's another video. This is the campaign version of my first board game. One in which has gotten incredible reviews, which is why I went back on my promise to never play this thing again. In fact, this entire week, I am only playing Ticket to Ride Legends of the West. I have to play 12 games before my wife will let me play anything else. And there's one problem. Yeah, this just arrived and it's the hottest game on earth, one in which could be my favorite game of the year. More on that later. So how did I get to this point where I'm stuck in a corner? Well, I've had Legends of the West for a while. Against my better judgment, I bought yet another ticket to ride and it's been sitting there. And I've been promising my wife we would get it to the table, but I keep using the channel as an excuse to play different games with her. I put it off for long enough. Like with anything that you put off, it's coming back to bite me with this new game that I really, really need to play. But let's back up. It all started when I didn't own one board game and I can't even remember how it made its way to our house, but Ticket to Ride showed up. And when it showed up, I was completely taken aback by the strategy that you could employ in this game. I didn't have the hundreds of board games that I have now or the experience in mechanisms and understanding what makes something good or not or fun or not. This was just a whole new world. I hadn't dealt with set collection, network building, um, goal completion, any of the kind of core staples in the Ticket to Ride genre. I guess like we can call it a genre, right? There's like a hundred Ticket to Ride games. Anyways, we started playing this thing feverishly. And it wasn't just me. My wife fell deep for this game. If it was up to her, we would have played it every single night. And in the beginning, we came pretty close. But it devolved into a toxic dance that my wife and I would do night after night. And both of us would come away feeling a little bit salty. And to be clear, she started it. It started with her feverishly grabbing tickets at the end of the game in hopes that she would be able to easily complete them or have already completed them. And the pace in which she continued to grab these, I just sat back and thought, there's no way that she has these things completed. Because side note, if you can't complete a ticket, it's negative points at the end of the game. But time after time, she started to just destroy me. Even if she had to take a negative every once in a while, the clip in which she was able to collect tickets and already have them completed or easily complete them was phenomenal. So I started to do the same thing. And when I started to do the same thing, I don't know. I, you know, some people complain that their luck on dice is worse than others. My luck in pulling tickets has historically been absolutely awful. And when she saw me start to employ that, she would drop the game on me. She read my face, she read my face and the disappointment as I was pulling those tickets, knowing that I had a significant way to go or they weren't completed and she would just end the game prematurely. Because of course, if you've played Ticket to Ride, you know that if you have zero, one or two trains left, the game ends, there's one more turn and, and you're done. So I stopped that strategy, that did not work. One fateful night, I started to block her. First, I started to read her eyes as she looked at her early tickets. You could kind of have an idea where someone is looking to build. So I started to build in those areas. And I started to connect my trains to hers over and over and over again, trying to block every single path that she had. And the great part in a two player game is you can't play that second rail next to you. So it worked, I won. That night I slept on the couch. Shortly after I employed that strategy, we stopped playing. We actually stopped playing board games for quite a while until I discovered Wingspan Everdell, but I digress. After the toxicity that Ticket to Ride created in our relationship, I had all but written off the game as a option in the future. So fast forward to now when a new Ticket to Ride campaign game promises interesting mechanics and a 12 game series of games and an ever expanding map, I was interested. Because at one point I really did love this game in spite of the broken mechanic at the end game to uh, draw tickets and the nasty take that nature of a two player game in particular. So now I have one week to play 12 games and this has just been delivered. Wish me luck. One eternity later. I just did it. That's seven days, 12 games. I thought I'd attack this in three parts. 
a beginning, middle, and end, of course, because the game does evolve over time it, by its nature and it being a campaign game. And to start out, it's Ticket to Ride. I mean, it is a smaller board. You're really mostly dealing with just the East Coast. The gameplay loop for the first two games is much the same. You still have three possible actions, drawing train cards, drawing tickets, or completing a route. None of that has really changed. There's some core differences. There's an event system. Events are drawn and are active until a new event comes along and replaces it. Those are triggered when you're drawing through the ticket pile. There's newspaper cards you shuffle in there, and as they draw, you activate a new event. Events have a wide variety of effects. The nature of them, some of them are persistent and uh, continuously interact with the players and their their actions until the new event comes along. Some have a one-time effect that is immediately resolved. Some are actually retired over time after they affect the game a certain number of times. I'm being vague on purpose because some of the events, um, there's some worthwhile spoilers in there. One example of an event that's not really a spoiler is when it's active, you can clear the train market and replace it if you don't like anything that you see there. Events in general are used throughout the game to interact with new mechanics that are being introduced. On top of that, each ticket after being completed is punched. Once all of your spaces for your particular color are punched, really any color whatsoever, that card is retired from the game forever. Some of these cards have a designation on them and ask you to go and pull a particular postcard. Postcards are cards that are in the box, they're secret. You um, grab the postcards, you read a little bit of flavor text to the entire table, but then it's secret to you and it might have a persistent effect of some sort, which I guess at that point you have to reveal it because people need to know you're not cheating because they kind of break rules a little bit. They also give you a scoring goal and that's where the secrecy kind of comes in. You don't necessarily want the other person to know what goals you're going for, but they are worth a significant amount of points by the end of the game. At the end of each game, you go through and punch all the tickets and you can only choose one postcard if you were retiring multiple tickets. Lastly, you choose a company that's connected to a color. Uh, one of the biggest kind of company effects, if you claim a route in your color, you get extra money. The value of that changes throughout the game, but just know that that is a viable strategy to get some extra money as you go along. Speaking of coins, coins are currency and points. There's no points per se, it's just coins. You'll earn those coins uh, as you interact with different mechanics, as well as kind of that company bonus that you get throughout the game. So in the beginning of the game, it's really short. You start with 20 trains for a couple places. I believe before you slowly kind of add the number of trains that's in relation to adding more parts of the board which we'll get to but the game is pretty basic and other than kind of accumulating some postcards dealing with some events and getting the company bonus there's not a lot different from like a strategic perspective which had me pretty disappointed in the very beginning my wife continued on her tear of pulling tickets and collecting points and I tried to emulate that and it completely killed me. She shot out to such a big lead in the beginning that I thought all hope was lost. I wasn't enjoying the game whatsoever and I wasn't enjoying that I had to play nine or 10 more games were just getting crushed. So needless to say, I wasn't particularly impressed after the first two games. Good thing they're short and it's really easy to kind of string a couple games together until you can start to get into the juicy stuff, which is this middle part. And the middle part is where this all gets so interesting. See, after each game past like the third game, I believe, you're unlocking new regions. The region is chose by the winner. The region has to be adjacent to a previously selected region. You are unveiling a board and those boards have incomplete tracks and you are essentially determining what color will go on those tracks. There's a bunch of stickers. Stickers are limited, so you can't just make the whole board yellow so you can get those company bonuses. But there is certainly a strategic component there and you, you know, possibly putting your tracks all over the board first, of course. But the most important part about the unveiling of each of these regions is that there's a brand new mechanic each and every time you do so. And, and I can't talk about them because they are the big spoilers. This is the thing in which if you're really interested in playing this game, you really don't want to touch. However, if you are interested in hearing about those mechanics and my take on those mechanics, go subscribe right now to my Substack. The link is in the description. Suffice it to say, they're incredibly interesting and incredibly varied. And every time I pulled a new region out, I was really excited to see what was next. The vast majority of these mechanics are on a timer. So as players interact with them, the timer clicks down in various ways. There's different ways it's implemented. It's certainly not the same each and every time. The best part about that is you never really have more than maybe three mechanics going at one time, usually one or two that you're trying to interact with. 
but it is giving a player really interesting decisions on what to interact with. It's definitely taking your attention away from completing tickets, so it is kind of a pick your poison, but they are completely viable. And if the other player, for whatever reason, isn't interacting with it, it's giving you more opportunity to go score more points. Some of the mechanics kind of happen by happenstance. You'll naturally interact with them, but maybe not in a particularly efficient way. There are so many memorable mechanics. One in particular really stood out where my wife and I both groaned when it was over. Depending on player count, you get to stopping points in some of these mechanics. In this particular one, we came across a two player stopping point and were really disappointed it didn't keep going the good news is more interesting mechanics keep coming along to kind of replace all of that another thing to note that happens is each game you're unlocking new ticket cards new event cards that interact with that particular mechanic you're also unlocking new employees and you start with a base number of employees but then there's more and more specialized employees that interact with the mechanics that make you more powerful and the way the employees work are the person who is last so this is a little bit of a catch-up mechanic always gets the president the president gives you one extra turn at the end of the game i think that's pretty cool especially with the way i was feeling in the beginning of the game getting completely trounced by my wife on top of that the last place player gets to choose another one so there's uh, i don't know maybe a dozen or so employees by the time you get to the end of the game some of them are retired based upon the number of times they've been selected as well. Some of them become obsolete based upon the mechanics that have been retired. And after the last person picks theirs, so they have two once again, everyone else gets to pick an employee as well. So that gives you an asymmetric advantage going into the next game and definitely can shape the way you want to play it. So back to player choice, one of my main issues with Ticket to Ride was this really linear strategy and there wasn't a lot of deviation. We were all going for the same thing and the, the interaction came with blocking or maybe getting lucky drawing some tickets that you happen to be really close to or have already completed. This is completely different. The employees give you a little bit of a direction. You obviously have the ticket cards and have to kind of read strategy there, but then you have to decide where you're putting your energy and that employee really helps that and really helps this game become something totally different than just ticket to ride i will say none of these mechanics are just like groundbreaking brilliant mechanics like when i when i look at um, some of the highest levels of game design i wouldn't put this there i would put this as a bunch of really fun mini games that we just really had fun interacting with and only seldomly ignored. There was always somebody kind of looking at it opportunistically to go and grab a bunch of points that were on the table for the given mini game at the time. So you continue this going through uh, regions, interacting with mechanics, retiring them, retiring train cards, grabbing postcards and accumulating points. A lot of this is secret, right? Like I think at the end of each game, we are comparing who won, but then there's all these other points that are happening through these other mini games that you're not scoring on the individual game. You're putting them in your company's vault that doesn't get opened until the very end of the game. And that's fun. I think that's really great. It, it would be really sad if I was staring at like a 300 point deficit throughout 10 games, not really wanting to interact. On top of there being kind of catch up mechanics and lots of opportunity, especially in a two player game that I found to kind of exploit those mechanics and score a bunch of points, that's where I really started feeling kind of flow state in this game, being really excited to get it to the table and not really missing playing arcs, actually, <laughs> as much as as crazy as it sound, as hyped as I am with trying to play this new hotness. This game was just fun and I had this drive to want to finish it, especially when I started winning games with these other mechanics, which leads me to part three, the ending. Personally, the last four games, or I guess games nine and 10 went much the same in the middle. I, I, I felt like I was extending a lead. Then my wife had been interacting with the mechanic over multiple games. I think it was basically three games. And I, she got to the point where she can kind of cash in on said mechanic. And she did in a really big way, which we'll review in the final scoring. But it was really interesting. Some of the mechanics are really quick and easy points or even money immediately. And then some of the mechanics are long term investment and strategy and finally cashing in but also cashing in where you didn't know what the reward was, which was a uh, fun, right? It, the, the, the mechanic of being able to, oh, I don't even want to say it. I guess we'll just say putting your effort towards a reward. You don't know what 
it is or how big it is. Um, it, it was really defeating when I saw how big her reward was, but I can imagine how great it felt for her who was taking some sacrifices by interacting with something that wasn't giving her immediate points. Absolutely paid off. So she, I believe it was like a 70 point win or something like that going into the very last game. I felt at that point we were probably pretty even and we went into it and um, I doubled down on another new mechanic that was only active over the last two games and scored a bunch of points there. So let's actually take a look at my scorecard here. All right, I won't name the mechanic, but there's three mechanics that you score at the end of the game that are introduced throughout the game. In mechanic A, I scored 105, she scored 100. This was a little bit of a disappointment. I should have read a little more into um, the everyone got points based upon placing and then the gap between first and second was actually fairly small. I invested a lot of effort in this mechanic and only got five points out of it because it's scored over, I believe, five categories. I won three categories really, really big and she won two categories at a s slim margin. Um, so those really big didn't really matter. It just gave me plus five points <laughs> essentially to her. So that didn't feel that bad. Mechanic two is one in which we both love. We both groaned when it was done. I thought I actually did well, but she scored 82 points and I scored 19. That certainly made a difference in the game. In mechanic number three, I scored 40. She scored 20. Yay for me. I got 52 points in postcards. She got 30. Yay for me. And bank slips. So just the game points alone, I got 1,058. She got 1,162. Final score was 1,274 to 1,394. I lost. So being the salty, toxic, ticket to ride players we were, was I hurt that I lost? That I invested over 12 hours and 12 different games into this game and lost? Absolutely not. The experience was second to none we've never had as a couple a gaming experience like this this was a game that she really liked and the mechanics that were added made me enjoy it so she got this what well, i'm gonna call she got this wonderful gift because i'm gonna be calling on her to play some arcs here soon so this was a an investment in a future game for me of course now she owes me but I also had a great time. I think this game is so much fun. It is just a, a great time. And especially if you've enjoyed Ticket to Ride in the past and you've kind of graduated past it, it's such a good way to go and revisit it. I, and like I said, go look at the blog. Like the mechanics are really cool. <laughs> the extra mechanics add a ton to this game. So a couple of the negatives though. I already touched on it. Some of the end game points were a little less impactful. The biggest one though is related to how much I like it in that you can't reset this game. There's no real way to reset it. It's destructive. You're, you're building out, putting stickers on a board. There's no way to go back on any of that. It's just the nature of the game. It's a destructive legacy game. Now, when that becomes a problem is it's $120 MSRP. I paid around 100, which ended up being around $7.90 per hour for fun. That's okay. I think that's probably a better dollar to fun ratio than a lot of my other games. But it, just for what you get in a one-time experience at 120 bucks, if you're paying full-blown retail on it, I don't know. Your mileage may vary. I mean, it's up to you. It's up to you what that fun is worth and how much you like Ticket to Ride and you want to interact with it again. It's just something to note that the price is awfully expensive. I asked my wife how much she would pay for this game. She's pretty out of touch from game prices, but she's at 60 bucks for what it's worth. The other thing that might be a little bit of a negative is upkeep is pretty big. 15 or 20 minutes from like scoring to unlocking new stuff, reading new rules, putting new rules in a book, and then actually putting it away. Certainly it helps you if you just roll right into a next game. It becomes a little more difficult as you're playing the bigger board with more and more trains near the end of the campaign because those are longer games than in the beginning. But just know that there there is some upkeep there. Did this fix the toxic nature, according to me, of Ticket to Ride? Or at least the way we interacted with it? I think absolutely. I think it, it took pressure off of any sort of kind of luck driven mechanic in driving those tickets. I never found a need to block just out of spite. I thought there was plenty to always interact with that was outside of tickets. And when I did interact with the other mechanics or mini games, it just felt good. They were impactful for the most part. They made a significant difference in points and it helped me come back, right? Like I think without 
the the mini games or the extra mechanics and the little kind of catch up mechanisms in there and the different ways to interact with the game, I would have been completely killed and not had much fun with this game whatsoever. So at the end of the day, I absolutely recommend this. I give it two thumbs up. If you played Ticket to Ride and you've graduated, go play it. It's great if you can afford it, I guess, is, <laughs> is the caveat there. And with that said, if you made it this far, I really appreciate you being here. Thank you once again and have yourself a great week.